Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by WFC heavyweight champion Josh Apelt. Josh, how are you? I'm good, sir. How about you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Josh, you claimed the WFC heavyweight championship when you defeated Roy Boughton at WFC 16 back on January 23rd. You won the fight by second round TKO. How pleased were you with your performance in the fight? Um, there's some things I can work on, but I, I was pretty pleased. You know, I just kept walking him down and, you know, just need to learn, check some more leg kicks and stuff. But otherwise, nothing really bothered me. It felt like my hands were pretty good and crisp. But, uh, you know, I need to work on a few little things. What was the game plan going into the fight, and how well did you execute it? Um, the game plan was to not get taken down. Of course, I got taken down once. Um, I thought I executed pretty well because Roy's really good on the ground and I didn't want to go there with him. I felt like I didn't get up, and I did a lot of work down south with uh, Orlando Sanchez and guys like that, and uh, I felt like the game plan went pretty well. In the fight, because you're a southpaw, you were throwing and landing a lot of overhand lefts. You really were able to find a home for that strike. Was that something that you had seen on film when you were breaking down Roy Broughton with your coaches, was that something that you thought going into the fight he'd be susceptible to? Or was that an adjustment you made in the fight when you saw that he was circling into your power? What made you decide to throw that overhand left a bunch in this fight? You know, usually I, I throw the straight left a lot, but he kept circling into my left hand, so, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to hide it on the blind side to touch him right on the ear. And he just kept circling that way. And so I ended up adapting to that and start throwing that overhand left. When you were training, getting ready for this fight, and you were watching Roy Boughton on film, did he do anything in the fight that surprised you? Like, when you were watching him on film, did he do anything in the fight that you weren't prepared for? And on the flip side of that, did he do anything in the fight that that you were preparing for, but it just never came? Was there anything in the fight that surprised you? His chin. (laughs) Sure. I mean, I hit that guy with some shots. And, you know, I knew he threw some kicks and some, I mean, he used to be a fighter at a lighter weight. I knew, I knew he threw some kicks and other stuff like that. But uh, n- nothing really surprised me with Roy. He's tough. I knew I was going to, I had a game with Paul. I mean, he's fought some top level guys. But nothing surprised me. I'm surprised he didn't try to take me down more. But I think I was keeping my distance good enough. You know, I, I'd close and i bounce out. I'd close and i bounce out. And we tie up, I'd struck him off and try to get out or, he didn't want to tie up with me because, uh, you know, that's why I like to be a dirty boxing. This fight card that you fought on, WFC 16, had a lot of great fighters and a lot of great fights on the card. I'm just curious, did you get a chance to watch any of these other fights? No, I, I, I watched Max Griffins, and that's it. You know, he's, he's a good training partner with me, and we train a lot of MMA goal. But I didn't get to watch any others. How did you celebrate the win? Uh, I went out uh, with the, uh, to ASR, you know, it's a lounge, and went out and with my family and friends and just had a few beers, and that's it. How good does it feel to have the WFC heavyweight belt? Because obviously, at one point in time, you know, maybe, I guess a year ago at this point, it was kind of doubtful that you would get that belt because you had lost two fights under the WFC banner and now obviously you've come back and won two fights but um, how good does it feel to have that belt? It feels great man, I've been, you know, my my good friend Dave Huckaba and the guy I first started training with in this whole, when I first started doing MMA had it, you know, we're never going to fight each other so I just kind of had to wait my turn and then after David Mitchell began, David Mitchell vacated it, and uh, Brandon said, hey, you want your shot? I said, yeah. He goes, well, you got this guy. And I was like, that's a tough guy. Let's make it work. Josh, we'll end on this. It's a little segment I like to call Really Random. That's where I ask you a random question and you give me the real answer. Some of these questions are custom-made just for you, and some of these questions are generic ones that I ask all the people I interview. So here's the first question. Superpower you'd love to have. Wouldn't love to have it. I like Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite movie? Favorite movie? Ooh. Probably Braveheart and Rudy. Movie you've seen the most times? Uh, Braveheart. Favorite color? Blue. Favorite guilty pleasure? Guilty pleasure? Yep. Um, hmm, good one. Oh, yeah, having a beer, maybe? Go-to song when you're singing in the shower. <laughs> oh, that's... A, I don't really 
really sing, man. I had a horrible voice, so no thing. Celebrity people say you look like. Well, when I used to be 330 pounds, Chris Farley. Right now, you obviously have the WFC heavyweight belt. In the past, you've held the Gladiator Challenge heavyweight belt. Are those the only belts you have? Yes, that's it. Do you still have the Gladiator Challenge belt, or did you have to give that back when you left? No, I had to get it, get it back when I first did the... Uh, there was a tournament a couple years ago in, in West Coast Fighting Championships, and I, I, I opted out the Gladiator to go get that belt, and uh, they asked for the belt back, so I just handed it over. Hmm. And before I could even finish the tournament, I got brought up to Bellator. Before this two-fight win streak that you're currently on, you were on a three-fight losing streak. What went wrong for you during that three-fight losing streak? Um, I had uh, some issues with, uh, you know, I, I was, went down and trained at Seneca MMA, and I blew out my patella. I completely severed it from my lower part of my leg, and I just wasn't there mentally. And, you know, I've, I've done a lot of things. I've talked, and, you know, prayed to God, and, and I, I came around, you know. Um, I just had a slump, and I, I don't plan on going back to that slump. What exactly happened with Bellator? Because obviously you had fought for them, and you have a winning record under their banner, but we haven't seen you back there since April of 2014. What exactly happened with them? I, I really don't know. That. Uh, you know, they, after I lost to Freddie Alcantara, I was 3-1, and one, and then I lost to Carl, and I think they kind of just let me go, but I think it was kind of before that when the, the interchange came with Scott Goker. I don't really know the guy, but... When I was fighting for Bjorn, you know, my first fight in Canada, then I fought in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and then seven days later I got I fought for Bellator in Temecula. So I, I don't know, you know, I thought I was being a good company man by fighting whenever they asked me to, but I really don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. I'd love to go back, you know. Right. I love those guys. They, you know, all those guys treated me good and respect, and they're just great guys. Right. But, you know, I, I'd love to go back to the UFC. I would like to go to the UFC, you know, mm-hmm. ultimate goal. Yeah, you know, like I said, I, I really wish I did know, but, you know, I took that fight with uh, Carl and it's him a lot too, who's fighting this weekend, and, you know, I trained with them now, and they kind of just let me go. I don't know if it was an interchange thing, but they let a lot of people go. Mm-hmm. And I, I would love to go back, you know. I thought I was holding my own with a 3 and one record. Guys like Mike Dolce and George Lockhart, guys like that, those guys who are nutritionists or dietitians or weight cut coaches or performance coaches, whatever they describe themselves as, whatever title they call themselves, guys like that would say a guy like you, someone under six feet, fighting at heavyweight, weighing between 240 and 250 pounds, they'd say a guy like you should be fighting at 205. They say a guy like you, if you worked with them, they could get you down to 205, no problem. So my questions to you are, this is a two-parter, first part, is it even possible for you to make 205? And second part to the question, have you ever considered making the cut down to light heavyweight? You know, I have a good nutrition coach, his name's uh, Ed Cassidy, and we've, we've considered it, but I, I carry around two, 220 pounds of muscle, and my BMI, you know, it's I was a little heavy for the fight because I didn't want to get, you know, be the smaller guy like I was with Carl, and I fought Carl at 228. Um, my BMI, you know, I walk around with a 14, and then when it comes time to, like, to lean out like I'm getting ready to do, I'll be at 12, and Coach, you know, Coach Doug, I call him, you know, he's a great guy, I love the guy to death. He's like, you're so much faster, you have way more cardio, why not just stay where you're at? I mean, I'll fight you at 265, and you're... 6'5", I, I mean, it doesn't bother me. I have thought about 205 a lot, and, you know, the management just doesn't think it's right right now. And, you know, I'm, I'm part of Iridium Sports agency, and they manage me, and they think I'm doing great where I'm at. What motivates you in life and in fighting? My son, he's six years old, and he just, he's my everything. Him and my wife, you know, they motivate me, and, and I don't want to settle for being mediocre in life, no matter what I do. No man should settle for being mediocre. I want to be at the top of everything, whether it's I'm at work right now, whether it's at work, whether it's fighting, whether it's just being a good human being, good hu- husband, whatever I have to do, I want to. I, I don't want to be mediocre. I want to excel whatever I do in life. Besides fighting, what are you passionate about? Football. Football is my first love. <laughs> I played high school football, 
played Pop Warner football. I played college football at Yuba College. Uh, I played semi-pro football for the Sacramento Fury and the Twin City Cougars. I played, you know, almost 20 years of football. What's your goal for 2016? Keep winning and go to the UFC or Bellator. Defend my title if I have to. If I get the call up, go up and keep winning there and just give it all I got, 100%. If you could stay one age forever, how old would you stay? Hmm, 30. I just think you, you you mature, you know, from like 28 to 30, you really start becoming that adult, you know, most people do. And, you know, you start getting that man strength and, I don't know, I just like 30. If you could trade places with anyone in the world for a week, who would you trade places with and why? Nobody. I love my life. I'm, I'm happily married, beautiful family, friends, support group, got the greatest fight fans in, you know, in all of Hershuba County and, you know, everywhere. And I just love my life. I mean, you know, money would be good, but, you know, all money does is bring evil and everything else. Obviously, you just said you're at work. So obviously, besides fighting, you also work a day job. What is that other job? I work for uh, Yuba County Public Works. I'm a uh, road foreman three and uh, work uh, nine hours a day and love my job. Hobbies outside of fighting? Fishing, hanging with the guys, shooting, taking my son fishing, just family time, enjoying company with my family and friends. Favorite food? Sushi. Least favorite food? Beet. Favorite restaurant? Ooh, that's a good one. Favorite restaurant? I like steaks, so I'm going to say Cool Hand Luke's. Favorite band and or solo artist? Eminem. Solo and bands, probably ACDC. Do you have a big penis? Negative. Then how come you're always getting hit low? Every fight I see you in, you're getting hit low. It's got to be a big target down there. How, how come that always happens to you? I'm wondering the same thing, you know, maybe I carry a big set of brass balls, but no, I'm average. So the mystery goes on. Yep. I don't know. I, maybe I got short legs and everybody throws the inside kick and they catch me there, or they go to push kick and they catch me there because they can't get their foot up high enough. Yeah. Roy Boughton hit you with a side kick right in the nuts, and then there was another one where it was like a low kick, and I, I think his his shin got you in the stomach, but his foot caught you in the balls. So that was... That one really yeah, that was... In the middle of the ring. Yeah, and then there's been other fights in the past where you keep getting hit in the balls. It's, yeah, it's very strange. Yeah, I got backward hammer fist in the balls. But yeah. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah. I really wish I knew, you know, thank God I got my one son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. How's your eye? I know you got poked in there several times. One time... The referee missed it, and then I think the second time he caught it and, and gave you some time. How's your eye feeling? It's good. I mean, it's, it's all red and cut on the outside, but it's good. I can see out of it. It's purple, but yeah. Did you suffer any damage besides that eye, whether it was in the actual fight or the training leading up to it? I thought my forearm hurts from elbow and that guy, from elbow and Roy, you know. The upper elbow hurts. But that's it. No body kicks didn't really phase me. I mean... Usually during training, I do, like, crunchies, and then my trainer comes over and bounces a 15-pound medicine ball off my stomach as hard as he can, so... Favorite social media platform? Mm, Facebook. Website you visit most often? Probably, uh, I'd say ESPN. Piece of technology you can't live without? Uh, watch. If you could go on a $1 million shopping spree at any store, what store would you go on that shopping spree at? Probably Cabela, our bass pro shop. What would you rather be, the best fighter in the world or the highest paid fighter in the world? What means more to you, glory or wealth? Glory. Good answer. I like that. Yes. Look at all these guys that have been rich fighters and now they're bankrupt. Right, right. Do you have any pre-fight rituals or superstitions? Uh, my fight song, I keep the same if I'm winning. Um, I say pray to God, but I pray to God every night, so, you know. Do you have any post-fight rituals? Yeah, usually I get my whole training uh, group together and their family, and we have a barbecue and watch the fights, or we have pizza or something like that. You know, I just like to show my appreciation to the guys that, you know, do the blood, sweat, and tears with me, and, you know, 
I, you know, those guys drive me, and I, I, owe, I owe them a lot. Who gave you your nickname, the Juggernaut? My dad gave it to me. Um, he said, when you're in there, son, you just look like an unstoppable force that keeps going through anything at will, and that's you know the definition for the Juggernaut. You kind of look like Juggernaut from X Men. <laughs> That. Yeah, in a strange a way. Big old chest. Yeah. yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, in a strange way, you kind of do. So it, it's a fitting nickname. I like it. What's the best thing that ever happened to you? Um, having my son. What's the worst thing that ever happened to you? Uh, breaking my leg, having family die. I've had a lot of injuries, you know, that kind of stuff. But you know, life goes on. You know, you can't dwell on it, and you know, keep moving forward. What's your pet peeve? When someone doesn't show up on time? Let's say you found a magic lamp, and you rubbed that magic lamp, and a genie appeared, and the genie said he was going to grant you three wishes. What would those three wishes be? Uh, the first one is for my health and then my family's health, you know, all in one. Mm-hmm. Make sure we're all health, you know, safe. And, and the next one would probably be to wish, you know, my son the best and brightest future he could have. And the last but not least is uh, I'd ask him for a great vacation for all my friends and family. Time period you'd like to go back and visit, and why? Uh, high school, probably. Go play on a better football team. <laughs> <laughs> Only for football. Yeah. <laughs> Person you look up to the most? Person I look up to the most? Probably be my dad. Oh, I have a, a stepdad who's raised me and my real dad. They just excel at what they do, and they're great men. What do you worry about? What's something that keeps you up at night? Um, not much. You know, I do worry before. It's kind of a weird thing, but I do worry before I fight. You know, make sure I perform at my best. I make everybody happy and give it all I got. Best advice you were ever given through life and best advice you were ever given through fighting and who gave it to you? Um, the best advice I've ever gave is, you know, to my fellow teammates, if they take a loss or something, I, you know, I say, why do we fall? And it's to get back up again. Keep moving forward. We have bumps in the road in life for a reason. That's because we're being tested by the man upstairs. So just keep moving forward. And the best advice I've ever been given is just, I got told, never quit and always give it your best. And that's by my dad. What's your hidden talent? My hidden talent? Um, my cardio? Or, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really have a hidden talent. What's your porn star name? If you combine your childhood pet with the street you grew up on, what's your porn star name? So I grew up on Park Circle, and my childhood pet is named Shadow. <laughs> Shadow Park Circle? I don't know. <laughs> Shadow Park Circle, okay. Number one thing on your bucket list? To go to the UFC. What are you doing right now? Are you... Back in the gym, training, getting ready for the next one, whenever and wherever it might be, or are you taking some time off to rest the body? What are you doing right now? Taking the next two weeks off to rest and get you know my family time in, and most time you know spend a lot of time with my son and you know go fishing or go the arcade or whatever him and my wife want to do. When would you like to fight next? June. Last question before I let you go: If you could change one thing about the world. What would you change and why? Uh, it'd probably be racism, man. We're all equal. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. We're all created equal. You know, people ask me how, you know, you, you got in there with him. But, uh, he's black. And, well, it doesn't matter. We're equal. We're the same, we're the same people. Mm-hmm. There shouldn't be black lives matter. There shouldn't be white lives, Asian lives. All lives matter. Period. Josh, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank? And is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Yeah, uh, just I thank uh, I love all the support, and I can't thank my fans enough. And I want to thank my sponsors: uh, MMA Gold, Meridian Sports Agency, Billy the Insurance, Float Therapy, Neutral One, uh, Nutrition Shop, um, and my wife and son. Josh, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. All right, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.